We've got the speaker interview. Well, it's week six of LCS with coverage brought to you by Alienware. I'm joined right now by a speaker from TSM to talk about how things Should be have fine been going volume. for TSM. It's been a bit of a rough weekend, I know, 0-2. Uh, and so I guess maybe the first question to speak is just how how are you personally holding up? Because obviously this has been a tough split. Yeah, Um. I mean, I think I'm doing a lot better. I, th I, I mean, I think definitely when you're 10th place. God damn, that's, that's tough. That's tough. Hey, man, so uh, your team is losing every single game. You're playing in LCS, which means that you're, like, guaranteed to be depressed. Any pro player that's ever in that situation. Oh, wait, my cams is frozen again. As an LCS player, you're just guaranteed to be depressed if you're, like, losing a ton of games. It's, it's a, I, I swear it's impossible to not let this affect your whole, f like, because the problem is it's not like you just are losing on stage and then you're you're able to ever, like, get away from that, you know? Like, even if you talk with, like, your parents or some shit, they're going to know what's happening most likely. And they're going to be like, oh, so like what's happening with your team? Like, why are you guys losing so much? You know, like you're never going to be able to escape the fact that you are currently losing because it is so public. Like you're it's it's just it's so hard to, to lose games as LCS. Actually crazy. It's like hard yeah. uh, to just stay positive. Um, but uh, for me, I guess that's just part of, you know, uh, being a pro player. Like sometimes your careers have ups and downs. Right. So I, I mean, it's like my first time. So I'm still trying to. Uh, get through it. I guess. Are you a caster now? No, I'm not a caster my, now. My question is this, obviously you a lot of pro players really start on like uh, a team that's at the bottom of the standings and then they eventually make their way on to like a C9, TSM or etc. Yeah. You unfortunately or fortunately <laughs> have always had success yeah. and so now it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It, it's not unfortunate because you want speaking to have success, but it's unfortunate that TSM has only had success for a, for a long period of time. That's unfortunate. I agree, Travis. Really a tragedy. To deal with this. So I don't know if you like if, if you've had to figure out ways to cope with it or if you've figured out ways to like deal with a tough weekend. I mean, yeah, like 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 you said before, like I guess my the start of my career was like pretty successful um, for like pro player standards. Like, um, you know, I started off started off on like top teams even during like the my first split summer 2020, uh, even though we had like a poor start. But like I always knew that, you know, um, we'll bounce back because we had like Birg and double if and they have really strong fundamentals right yeah. and like we always believe that we can always win um so it was definitely uh like a difficult change for me I guess you know when you're always like in a top team and then suddenly you start losing um uh just like a lot of other issues right yeah it's a turning point right this is like the part where you have to like you have to like get through this as a pro player this will destroy you by the way it, it, like if you're if you're weak-minded like and then you start losing confidence in yourself and you're like oh maybe we actually suck or like maybe i'm just not good enough like if you start having these thoughts this shit can actually just destroy your whole career like some people go from being on a top team have a period on a bad team they never recover you know i mean you, you see the trajectory with a lot of people's career so this is like the turning point for speaker i mean this is a test for for him it's it's probably really difficult but for you know viewers you'll be able to see like okay like Things were not going well. I mean, individually, he's not been playing great either. Like, what what is going to be his response? Is he going to, like, just power through it and become a fucking beast again? Or is he just going to be, like, an average juggler in NA? Because, I mean, he definitely has the potential to be top three. So we'll have to see, like, if from an individual standpoint, he's able to level up his game enough that, like, the team could start picking up wins. Because if Spika starts playing well, I mean, TSM probably won't be a winning team. But maybe they could, like, get into playoffs, like... For example, they could be like a six team. Probably not this split, but just in the future. Well, on the broader end, how is the rest of the team holding up? I did an interview with Shenny last week. He says, there's no issues anymore. Everybody's friends. Everything's cool. Yeah. Um, so I don't know how the team on a whole is dealing with it, especially because I know like, oftentimes it up on a second really monitor tough for a team whenever at. you all go back into the room afterwards. It's just like silent. Um, I, it's hard for me to speak for other players, yeah. um, but I definitely know that um, uh, Huni and uh, Tactical, they're like kind of emotional players. Uh, for me, I, I think I deal with it like decently well. Like obviously I had like a bit of a rough phase, um, but I think right now I'm like coming into it. Yeah. Um, Copium. I, I know they're like really emotional players and I, I you know, obviously like I said before, I can't speak for them, um, but I feel like it definitely, uh, it definitely impacts the team atmosphere a lot. Yeah. I feel like there's like a lot of pressure um, as well, especially because um, we're on TSM. I, I think the biggest thing is just ex expectation versus like what actually happens, right? Yeah. Um, I think that's like a very big thing when what you're ex you're like way below. Where you're Bro, does he keep on talking softer and softer? Are you 
uh, staying away <laughs> from the internet or do you go on Twitter and see people tweeting oh, at you? Oh man, it's like you start the interview, he's like, yeah man, like what's up dude, it's been, uh, it's been, it's been good, let's do the interview. And then he starts talking about TSM and he's like, fuck man, I just fucking hate this shit bro, like what the fuck, like our team just fucking sucks and I don't really know what the fuck to do, so I'm gonna just have fucking severe depression now. FF. I'm, sh I'm sure it's yeah. a bit of a different vibe than when you were just L plus ratioing everybody last summer. Yeah, I mean, um, it's hard to have fun when you're yeah. losing, that's for sure. Um, but for me, I, I guess I've tried to stay away because I feel like a lot of times, bro, what? Um, people just don't understand how the game is played. I guess like I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm playing fucking amazing, um, but people don't see a lot of nuances behind the team and like um, stuff like that. So you know, I take everything with a grain of salt, but um, it, it's still, it's still very tough. Um, and you know, hopefully we can have better results. Uh, what have you guys been working on behind the scenes? I mean, the the one thing that I'm going to say for him is, like, I think what Spiga needs to do is he needs to just have, like, complete control of the game because I think right now one of the things that's happening is, like, it's clear that that he is spending time doing things that don't make sense and for, like, whatever reason, right? Like, you don't, you can't be 100% sure what these reasons are, but he's the type of player, it looks like he's the type of player right now where, like, his lanes will be like, oh, I need to, like, we need a cover. We need a push out here. And he's going to be the the guy that's going to have to decide whether a lane actually needs a push out or not. Or like if he should base. Because it feels like he's just getting dragged around the map. One laner will want this. One laner will want the other thing. And he's just like putting out fires all over the map instead of what he should be doing. Which is like doing what is most efficient for him. Like he should know when like, oh, like we can't push this out. Like your lane is just fucked. like tactical, buddy. You just ran it fucking down. If we go to push out this lane, we're just dead. Like, we can't actually do this. So, I think that that's, like, the, the next step for Speak is he's going to have to have complete, like, authority within the game to essentially call off anything that doesn't make sense for him. And he can't be, like, following um, his laner's decisions because his laners are just going to be making bad decisions, which is, like, really hard to do. This is extremely difficult to do in-game, but it is possible. He needs to try to, like... Get things to a better place. And he plays Lee and Rek'Sai like they're farming champs, but he doesn't play Lee and Rek'Sai like they're farming champs. I don't know where this narrative came from that he's like only farming. I think what it what it comes from is people watch and they they don't know what he's actually doing, so they assume that if he's not ganking, he's farming, which is not which is not the case. There's a lot of other things you could be doing that is not ganking and not farming. You could be covering lanes. You could be walking to places like looking for ganks that don't end up happening. A lot of the time, he's actually just wasting time on the map trying to help people. You're making progress, or I'm, obviously it's like tough yeah. when you you hit the zero two to f maybe feel like that mm -hmm. the week beforehand was helpful. Um, I mean, I, I feel like we're definitely making progress, but I guess um, that's for every team, right? Like yeah. every, we're improving, but like every team is also improving, and we started off really, really far behind. Um, I would say there's like a lot of things happening Looking in the off season, um, a lot of other things game. that set us back. Like we had two roster changes, I believe. Yeah. Um, you know, we swapped out Shengi and then we also swapped out uh, Kaido. Um, so I felt like in terms of improvement, we are improving, but we're definitely super far behind. Um, and I think it's going to be pretty tough. Well, uh, but, I won't keep you too long. Bro, but like, what does that even mean? See, like everyone will always hit you with this right here. They'll be like, yeah, we're improving, but the other teams are improving faster. Where it's like, yes, bro, like everyone is technically always improving, right? Like it's very rare where you're going to be playing as a team and you're going to be getting worse. But like what the real question is, is like, what is your rate of improvement compared to other teams? Like that's what people mean when they say improving is like, how good is your team in relation to the other teams in your league? So you can't just be like, yeah, we're improving. It's just that all the other teams are improving faster, so we're last. So it's not like we didn't improve. It's like, well, I mean, sure. Your improvement is on a scale which is relative to the, the teams that you are playing in like in your league verse. Especially because I know it's been uh, a tough weekend, but is there anything you want to say to any of the TSM fans? Because I know they're still cheering you guys on. Um, yeah, I'm kind of speechless, not going to lie. It's, yeah. it, it's been pretty rough. It's been pretty rough, but... Um... You know, careers have up and downs. Uh, hopefully, I can show better performances, and um, hopefully, there's still going to be fans.